Up to 75, the header. Moroni returns to the history of the world. The kings and queens of medieval times are established. The people are taught by their religions to reverence the royal families of the earth. The arts and thought of the Renaissance are caused by the influence of Satan. 1. And now, I will return once again to the abridgment of the vision of the brother of Jared concerning the latter days, and those things that shall transpire in those days that shall cause so much misery and unhappiness among the children of men. 2. And it came to pass that after the great Roman Empire had fallen, and its fall was not of a sudden, but it continued to be diminished in its strength and its glory over many years. 3. And it shall come to pass that it shall be dissolved into many nations, each taking a part of it and forming their own government based upon that which they believe shall best suit them. And many great kings and queens and many kingdoms shall rise up throughout the earth, each sufficiently strong within its own borders to protect itself and maintain order among the people who accept the leadership of the kings that rule over them. 4. And these kings and queens shall begin to think of themselves as those who are special and blessed and chosen by God, and they shall deceive the people and compel them to believe that they are of a royal bloodline, and this belief will ensure them their positions and authority among the people forever. 5. Nevertheless, these royal families cannot be established and maintained if they are not accepted and supported by the people. 6. And the hearts of the people shall turn to their religions and to their beliefs in God, and most of their beliefs and faith are products of the hopes and prayers of the poor, who are the majority of the people who work the land and provide the kings and queens with riches and the fine things of the world. 7. And these poor shall become the property of the kingdom, and be subjected to the will of the ruling class, which are the kings and the queens and the nobles, and those who have been appointed by and receive their glory from the royal families. 8. But the poor, who are the majority of the people, are those who shall give unto the royal families their prestige and their power. For without subjects to rule, there could be no kingdom and no royalty to rule it. 9. And for this reason the churches during this time period shall become prosperous and important to the royal families. For the people shall believe in the leaders of their churches and shall be taught to believe that their leaders are the mouthpieces of God for them. 10. Therefore, anything or anyone that is sanctioned by the leaders of the church is accepted by the people as that which God has sanctioned. 11. And the kings and the queens and the royal families depend upon the blessings of the church to maintain their power over the people. 12. Thus shall the kings and queens be ordained and prospered by the churches of the land in the sight of the people, that they might know that these kings and queens are called of God to rule and reign over them. 13. And I have already explained unto you that during this time of darkness, which shall be known in the latter days as the medieval times, the Father shall give Lucifer his equal time to present his plan to the children of men. 14. And for this reason, the people shall be left to themselves, and the light of Christ that is within them, if they are righteous, and these shall not be helped by the Holy Ghost, nor shall they be inspired and guided by the ministrations of those spirits in the spirit world who were under his direction. 15. And the children of men shall be left unto themselves at this time, so that they might learn from their experience that which is good and that which is evil. 16. Nevertheless, it is expedient that ye understand that each person still possesses the conscience or the light of Christ as it hath been explained unto you, that the Father hath given to each of his children immortality. 17. And I have explained unto you that this is the enmity that the Father hath placed between the sons and daughters of Adam and Lucifer. 18. But Lucifer began to fulfill the promise that he made to the Father when he said, 
and with the enmity that hath been placed between me and the children of men, I will take the treasures of the earth, and with gold and silver I will buy up armies, and the means of force, and priests, and religions, and I will reign with blood and horror on this earth. 19. And these things Satan began to do without the Spirit upon the earth, to aid the children of men to be able to discern between that which is of God and is good, and that which is of Satan. 20. And the leaders of the church shall become the emissaries of Satan in all things, and they shall be paid well by him, having received many of the fine things of the earth from the kings and the queens whom they support. 21. And the people shall be taught by their religious leaders that the kings and queens, who the people are deceived into believing have been called of God, deserve the best parts of the land and the best part of all the fine things of the earth, which the people can produce and provide for them. 22. And thus are the principles of priestcraft that Satan hath established among the children of men. 23. For behold, if a people believe that their possessions and their property and the things that they produce by the sweat of their own brow do not belong to them but to God, then it is easy for them to give up these things to those whom they believe have been called of God to lead them and protect them. 24. And the people of the various kingdoms know that they are threatened at the border of their lands by those who are marauders and who are desirous to take their lands and their possessions by force. 25. And in this way the people become dependent upon their king and his armies for their protection. And when their king goeth up to battle against their enemies and is victorious, then the people believe that their king is blessed by God and hath been given the power of God to protect them. 26. And the king shall begin to amass strong armies to protect the people, and there shall be some times that there is no threat at the border of their lands. Nevertheless, the king shall seek to incite the people to believe that they are in danger of an imaginary enemy, so that the kings can keep the people believing in them and in need of their protection. 27. And in this way the royal families are able to justify the great tax burden that is placed upon the people. 28. But in many instances the individual kingdoms are threatened by a stronger kingdom, or a larger one that has more powerful armies that could conquer the weaker kingdom. 29. And when the kings are weakened in their state of popularity among the people, they call upon the leaders of the religions to speak to the people, and assure them that God is with them. 30. And thus shall the church which shall be established during the end times of the Roman Empire, begin to exercise its authority and its power in all aspects of the lives of the people of the earth. 31. And among all the nations of the earth, the sword shall wield the power, and bring the people under the submission of the kings and the queens who command the means of force that Satan hath caused to be set up among all the kingdoms of the earth. 32. And now, I, Moroni, have read of all these things which shall come to pass among the nations of the earth in the words of the brother of Jared, which he wrote of the vision that he received from the Lord. 33. And I do not take credit of myself for that which I write, except it be for those things which I speak unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost, which is in me, or for those things that the Lord himself commanded me that I should write. 34. And my abridgment of these things is taken from the vision of the brother of Jared. And there are times that I have used his own words, but much of the time I have written an abridgment of that which he hath already written concerning these things, so that I might emphasize those things that the Spirit commandeth me to emphasize for the sake of those of you of the last days, to whom these things shall be revealed, even those things which are pertinent to your salvation and the times of the latter days. 35. Behold, if ye liken unto yourselves all of the things that I have written in my abridgment of the words of the brother of Jared, then ye shall see the great importance of these things to you. 36. And there are many of you of the latter days who shall not believe that ye are likened to the people before you, 
who were subjected to kings and queens and the royalty of monarchs who received their gain by the power and control that they had over the people. 37. And if ye believe this, then ye are deceived by Satan who hath established this kingdom in the same manner throughout the history of the earth. For are ye not also burdened with great taxes because ye have been convinced by your leaders that if ye do not maintain a powerful army, your nation and your family shall be destroyed? 38. And have not your leaders in many instances created the wars among you against enemies that did not exist, so that they could control you and show forth the greatness of their leadership and their powers? For they care not for the lives of the people of other nations, but care only for their own power which they hold over the hearts and the minds of the people of their own nation. 39. And ye of these nations ignorantly follow the course that Satan has set before you. For when Satan reigneth over his dominions, and hath power over all the nations of the earth, then they are in his hands, and he doeth with them what he will. 40. And if there be a nation under his power that is at peace, and he thinketh that this nation is in need to be reminded of his strength and his power over them, then he will raise up another nation and direct that nation to throw itself upon a peaceful nation to subdue it and destroy it. 41. And when another strong nation under the power of Satan witnesseth that a weaker nation that is under the same power of Satan is being overcome, then this stronger nation rises up and destroys the nation that is attempting to overcome a weaker nation. 42. And when this great nation succeedeth in the battles that Satan hath caused it to fight, then the people gain trust in their leaders and in their nation, and then their hearts are more fully dedicated to their nation and to their leaders, which are the servants of Satan. 43. Thus doth Satan cause one nation to rise up and destroy another that he might keep all nations in his power, as he desireth, in order to keep all people under his power. And during the time of his power, he doeth this thing that he might maintain control over the hearts and minds of the children of men. 44. Behold, first he causeth them to separate themselves into families and cities and nations. Then he causeth them to seek for riches to care for their families and make their own nation better than that nation of their brothers. Then he causeth the leaders of this nation to instill fear and patriotic duty in the hearts of its citizens so that they will do his will in all things. 45. For the nations and kingdoms of the earth care not for the doings and the welfare of another nation. For Satan hath put it in their hearts to hate all other nations and think that only their nation is a blessed nation under God. 46. And if the people of a nation or a kingdom began to question the position of their own nation and kingdom, then Satan seeth that he is losing power over the hearts of this people. Therefore he causeth war with another nation, so that the people feel fear for their safety and the safety of their families, thus winning over the hearts of the people again to hate and fight each other and live in fear of each other. 47. And when their nation hath risen up and destroyed another nation, then they thank God and praise the greatness of their nation for that which they have done unto another. 48. And now, my brothers and sisters, do ye think that the father of this earth condoneth war in any manner? Do ye believe that he would command one of his children to rise up and kill another? Do ye think that he hateth one nation because of their works more than another, even if their works be the works of Satan? 49. I say unto you that the true God doth not condone war, neither doth he condone that one nation shall think of itself above another. 50. Even in the defense of your life, when another nation cometh upon you to destroy you, doth God condemn the use of force and anger in your defense? 51. Yea, he suffereth that ye defend yourselves from another, but he doth not condone this thing. And that is what the Lord meant when he said, He who saveth his life shall lose it, and he who loseth his life for my sake shall find it.
52. Therefore, when a people support their leaders in war, and in the pride of their hearts they look down upon another nation, and think of themselves as a better nation, ye can know of a surety that these people belong to a nation under Satan. For a nation under God would do no such thing. 53. Now, during the times of peace when Satan is not causing war and strife among you to keep you in his power, he beginneth to reveal unto the children of men the things that bring moments of peace and happiness, or this temporary peace and happiness that I have explained is the reward or one of his blessings. 54. Therefore, during this dark period of time in which the Spirit of God is not upon the earth in all its power and purpose, Lucifer beginneth to introduce into the world many wonderful things pertaining to the flesh, even in the arts, and in theatre, and in music, and in dance, and in sculpture, and in the architecture of the buildings that he causes to be constructed by the poor for the needs and wants of the rich. 55. And from the time that Adam and Eve were banished from the land of Eden, the children of men began to be influenced by Satan to bring forth the fruits of his own blessings unto them. 56. And remember that which I have said unto you concerning the temporality of the blessings of Satan, even that the effect of the happiness that ye receive from one of his blessings lasteth for but a moment, and then returneth you to the misery that ye feel because of him. 57. And now, since the plan of Lucifer is to circumvent the plan of the Father, which offereth eternal happiness to those who follow after it, yea, Lucifer hath introduced many things into the world to change the focus of the minds of the children of men, from the things of God to the things that he helpeth them create with their own hands, even that which bringeth to them a temporary joy. 58. And when the people are burdened exceedingly because of the causes of the plan of Lucifer, he giveth unto them a reprieve from their pain and their sorrow and the unhappiness that they feel from him. 59. And for this reason he also introduced wine, and the means of other stimulants that relieved the souls of men from the daily drudgeries of their mortal lives, which would not be miserable if they followed the plan of the Father. 60. And he also inspires the minds of men in their inventions of painting, and sculpture, and of other arts that are the creations of their own hands. 61. For behold, what man among you can create the beauty and splendor of nature? Yea, look at the animals and the plants that the Father hath created in all their beautiful forms, and placed upon this earth for our enjoyment. 62. And how can ye say that ye receive the same enjoyment from a painting, or a sculpture as that which ye receive from observing the beauty and perfect order of nature in all of its glory? 63. And when ye walk in a forest among the trees, and the plants that the Father has placed there, and ye behold the peace and serenity of nature in all of its glory, do ye not come away from this experience with a joy and a happiness which lasteth for ever? Doth it not last much longer than that which ye experience in a gallery of the paintings that ye suppose are great works of art given unto you by the hands of man? 64. Behold, it is the desire of Lucifer to mimic the things that the Father hath given unto us to bring us joy and happiness, but the things that Lucifer causes to come forth to mimic these things are things made by the arm of flesh. 65. And because they are made by the arm of flesh, he who hath made these things receiveth the honour and glory that cometh from that which he hath created with his own hands. And thus is the plan of Lucifer fulfilled. End of chapter 75